Well, hello everyone and welcome um, to day 71 of my 90 day vlog challenge. I hope you are all having a fabulous Saturday afternoon. Um, yes, I am so excited to come to you today. I can't believe we're in the 70s already getting there on the downward um, slope, that's the right word, not spiral, downward slope to 90 days of vlogging. And I really don't know what I'm gonna do after that. I'm gonna have to come up with a creative idea to still keep in touch with all of you. And if you've got suggestions in terms of how I can continue supporting you with this type of information and content and knowledge sharing, please feel free to let me know. You can just pop it in the comment section right now or if you're watching the recording uh, at the time of watching because I'm always um, sure to come back and have a look and uh, see what feedback you guys have given me. So the topic for today is a question that I'm very often asked. Okay, so people ask me this um, either via Facebook message, via email, they ask me, you know, when I meet them at networking events or um, very often, most often really, when it's uh, my one day in person workshops. Um, and the question I get asked is, Gerda, how long does it take to get to the ultimate level five private practice? So, um, you guys would know if you've read my book or if you've been to any of my trainings that I talk about the five levels of private practice development and you know it, it's on a continuum from level one being that startup practice where you're a solo practitioner and then you've got one person that's joined you maybe to level five where you are a group private practice owner and um, you've got eight or more clinicians on your team and you've basically been able to establish a business that can run in your absence. How does that sound? Awesome, right? Yes, so very often people ask me that question. So they go, okay, Gerda, so if I do this thing, how long is it gonna take me to get to level five? Now, um, that's a good question. That's a good question. Um, and before I'm gonna give you the answer, I'm gonna, I have to put in a disclaimer when it comes to business. So when it comes to business and growing your business, especially if your vision is, hi, hi Usain Dad, thank you for joining. Um, <laughs> I'm glad that you are here with me. Uh, yes, so when it comes to business, what we need to realize first and foremost is that there is no shortcuts in business. Not if what you want to do is build a long-term, sustainably successful business, i.e. a business that's not going to go like that the whole time. There's going to be lots of periods like that. Uh, but a business where even though there might be ups and downs, that you're consistently moving up. Hey, Anna, thanks for joining me. So that's what you want to do. Obviously, you want to consistently move forward, but you, you know, you don't want to take shortcuts because shortcuts will land you in trouble. So when people are looking for shortcuts in business, that is a red flag. Hi, Brooklyn. Thanks for joining me. I've just been saying that there's no shortcuts in business. However, what you can do in business is you can fast track your progress. Brooklyn says, hi, Gerda, I'm at the hairdresser. Awesome multitasking. I hope you're enjoying it. I love going to the hairdresser. I find the massage, when I go for my massage, monthly massage, and to the hairdresser, those are the two places that I normally want to fall asleep. I don't know why. Um, um, I've got a very talkative hairdresser, but I'm not talkative unless I'm talking here to you guys or talking about private practice success. When I go to the hairdresser, I like chill out and I will almost fall asleep sitting there whilst they're doing my foils. So enjoy and thanks for still listening in. So the, I guess the bottom line is there's no shortcuts in business, but you can fast track what it is that you're doing. So to come back to the question that I'm asked so often, uh, so people go, yes, Gerda, I'm in. I, I want to learn how to run my practice as a profitable business. How long is it going to take to get to level five? Because I want all the perks that comes from being a level five ultimate private practice. And my response to that question is normally the following. 
it depends. <laughs> okay, and that's not a good answer to get. That's such an annoying answer to get. But it's the truth. It is absolutely the truth. It's going to depend on each situation and based on each person in each practice and based on where your practice is at. Because you might be talking to me and you might have a level two private practice asking that question. Or you might be talking to me and you might have a level four private practice asking that question. You know, it also depends on how much time you have. How much time do you have on your hands? You know, if you're somebody like me that's got three young children, um, you know, you're going to be, you're going to have less time to work on your business. If you maybe in your late 20s haven't started a family yet and you're really driven, you know, you're going to be able to work much longer hours, get stuff done much, much faster. Okay, so it really all depends on, on where you are at as an individual on your life content. Continuum, and then it also depends on where your practice is at in terms of are you in a level two private practice that you want to get to a level five or are you already in a level four practice that you want to get to a level five so that all being said what are they normally the next part of my answer when people asks me that is the following hi Anna and I says exactly cool I'm glad we agree the other part of the second part of my answer then is to at the very least give people an idea of what my progress was. Okay, so when um, I started working with my business coach, which was really the catalyst for me in changing the way I was doing things, I was already three years into my private practice. It's why I always say it's it's relatively easy to start a private practice. It can, um, what's the right English word? Um, I don't know, what I'm trying to say is you can be fooled by initial success in thinking that you've ticked all the boxes, in thinking that you've done everything right until um, something happens and then you realize, oh geez, I actually didn't know what I was doing. Um, and that is what happened for me. So from the day that I took on my business coach, it took me three years to change my practice around and get it to a level five ultimate private practice. That being said, I do think it takes longer uh, when you have an established group private practice as mine was. So when I started to change my management style, which really therefore, um, not only my management style, but also procedures, policies, and systems, it was it really became a change management process, if you think about that. And I had already um, quite a number of clinicians on my team, and it's really hard getting them on board, and that's why I say it was a change management process in terms of accepting that things are going to change. Um, you know, there were some people that got on the bus and was really motivated and could see my vision for the practice, and then there were other people that were just very resistant. They couldn't do things differently, couldn't step out of their um, you know comfort zone that they were in at that point in time and they got off the bus and you know that was okay as well and when I started working with my business coach he warned me that that's probably gonna happen and you know I had to accept that that's probably gonna be the case and it was so the first here really was all about I guess me teaching to some extent my business coach in terms of how we do things in our industry, how things are different, you know, the different rules, regulations, policies that we as allied health professionals need to adhere to and which other normal small businesses don't have to. And he would give me fabulous advice and very often what I would have to do is put it through my APS and APRA filter and go, actually, I'm not allowed to do this. However, if this is the outcome we want, how do we do this part differently um, according to the rules, according to ethics, so that we still get the same outcome? So the first year was a lot of that type of stuff and a lot of change management, a lot of, I guess, HR management, a lot of difficult conversations with team, a lot of letting go of people. Um, and it was an emotional ride, that's all I can say. The second year was much, much easier because by then I really got into this whole thing of 
this is okay what I'm doing and I started to see some results so uh, what have really happened in year two is that profitable private practice mindset um, started to become a more conscious part of my everyday thinking as a business owner okay where I knew and I had that awareness that this is what is required of me and then in year three things just started to soar and that private practice mindset the profitable mindset uh, really became an unconscious just part of my decision making and what it is that I had to do so I guess that just gives you a bit of a, a benchmark. Obviously, I, I'm still a person that had a family, so I still had other commitments in my life. And for me, having had a fairly big practice, having to change it, it took within three years, I was a level five. I often think to myself that the guys that do come to the workshops and they only at level one and two, I go, geez, you are so lucky. Hey, Carrie Ann, thanks for joining me. Uh, I always think they are so lucky because they come in and they learn the stuff right from the start, which means they don't have to go through that whole change management process, which was the toughest part of everything I had to do was doing this change management with my team. All right. And if you come in earlier, the earlier you come in, the better, because it means that you get to do things right from the start. And those are the guys that are also going to be at an advantage for getting to level five a lot sooner. Yes, so that is my answer to that question that inevitably always pops up. And the other thing that I will say is that um, it, it's, it, it has a lot of momentum, your growth. When you start to change things, it really feels like the first year is just like one hard slog, one challenge after the other even though you're doing things differently. But then the growth that you start to see in the next two, three, four years is amazing. Um, I'm not sure which business guru always says this. I can't remember off the top of my head, uh, but I know there's the saying in business that people generally overestimate what they can achieve in business in a year like people set these huge goals like oh by the by the end of the next 12 months I want to make a million dollars it's impossible all right oh, I, okay it's not saying impossible but it's not very likely um, so people overestimate what they can do in 12 months but if you've set appropriate goals in those 12 months, um, if, you, if you are clear on the plan and you've got that goal, you've got the plan, you've got the strategies, and, and not only the strategies, but the right strategies for your business, for your industry, and you then go and implement those strategies, um, you're going to get to your 12-month goals. If you do that, then your growth in here, two, three, four, and five, is just going to escalate. So the saying is that people overestimate that what they can do in 12 months, but they underestimate what they can do in three years. And that's because of that compounding effect that the hard work in year one gets you to. Okay, it's almost like compounding interest when you do an investment. Uh, you know, it's hard in the start, but as long as you stick with it, as long as you trust the process, you will get to level five. And yes, the, the, the initial 12 months is going to be hard, but it will get easier. And really what... Um, what separates the what from the what? What's the English I'm um, saying? Um, the, um, I've got an Afrikaans saying for that. <laughs> I don't know what it is in English, but I guess what separates the people that are successful and the people that are not successful is whether you've got the courage and the persistence and the motivation and the determination to persist through those first 12 months, which is really, really tough, and then to continue and to not give up. You cannot give up. It doesn't matter how hard it gets. It doesn't matter what challenges come. As long as you just persist, okay, you will get there. Now, a lot of people persist whilst doing the wrong thing because you don't know what you don't know. Okay, and until you know what you don't know, you don't know what you don't know. Hope I haven't lost you there. Jeez, I can't believe I got that right because sometimes I confuse myself when I say that. Um, but that's the problem. You can persist with doing the wrong thing. 
all right and that is where uh, you know training in what works for us uh, what, uh, comes really in handy whether that is coming to one of my workshops or reading business books or or doing business coaching or just speaking to the other people in our Facebook groups or in your community other people that's going through the same um, challenges that you are that is why that is so important because if you don't know what works and what doesn't you're just going to be hitting your head amongst a brick wall and you don't want that when it comes to persistence you want to persist with the implementation of the right stuff hope that makes sense um let's have a look there's some comments here brooklyn says before watching your vlogs i would get busy etc doing everything and now i stop and ask myself hang on is this an income productivity and then i change my action oh i love that brooklyn you know um as practice owners but you know just as people in general because i i my my personal to-do list is probably just as long as my business to-do list and one of the big challenges that practice owners often raise with me is time time to get everything done and the fact that that to-do list is never ending and what i encourage people to do is when you look at your to-do list always know what is your top three priorities and then you want to ask yourself um at least one of those three things is it a cash generating activity okay from your top three things at least one thing has to be a cash generating activity all right and if you do that every day you'll stay on task and you'll have good cash flow um, yes income producing activity yes that makes sense hey Salima how are you Salima I need to pronounce your name properly <laughs> awesome all right I hope that was helpful um, if you've joined us a bit later in this vlog be sure to go and listen right from the start because this was a good one I think um, Salima says yay hello <laughs> awesome all right everybody I need to go I'm off to take my daughter to her netball game and do the normal Saturday uh, sport thing I will speak to all of you again tomorrow of course which is Sunday um, as I said on yesterday's vlog, for those of you, I know a lot of you have been, but for those that haven't been to my one day introductory workshops, I'm kicking up my, uh, off my national tour next month here in Brisbane. I'll pop the link into the comment section. Uh, if you haven't been to one, please come and join me, uh, meet me in person, say hi and hello. Or if you have any other colleagues that needs to be coming that hasn't been to it, please share it with them as well. Hey Alex, good vlog, thanks. Uh, awesome, I'm, I'm glad you liked it and I think this is the first time you've commented here. I really, really appreciate that. Uh, welcome to the Private Practice Success community. Awesome, all right everyone, I'm gonna let you go and remember as always, all you need to do is say yes to your very own ultimate level five private practice and I'll speak to you again tomorrow. Bye for now.